What are the advantages and disadvantages of rank choice voting? And since a lot of people are talking about implementing this in the United States, some local areas have already implemented it, this is going to be an important question. So let's get into it. And I have another video that explains rank choice voting if you're not familiar with the concept. This video just looks at the, the strengths and, and disadvantages. All voting systems have flaws. As a matter of fact, that's been proven mathematically. Um, in Arrow's Impossibility Theorem, I'll link to some videos below which explain that. But of course, Arrow's Impossibility Theorem does not account for behavioral economics, which of course is going to introduce even more biases in to voting systems. And to give you a little sense of where I'm going with this, I think one of the behavioral economics principles that is going to be really important for voting systems is effort aversion. The fact that a lot of people will not go through the effort of voting in primaries or voting multiple times. A lot of people will go through the effort one time and that's actually going to be a human bias that people can take advantage of if you have a lot of money and can influence the way votes happen. Okay, so what are the advantages of this system? One of the most important advantages is that you don't have to think quite as much about who you hate most. That person obviously is going to be the last choice you have among the candidates, but each of those rounds is basically voting for someone. Who do you like best? So it takes away that who's the worst option, which can sort of take up a lot of mental space and space in the media in a polarized world where everybody's thinking about how bad certain people are rather than how good and how effective will, um, will some of these smaller candidates be on policy things. We want people thinking about who will be an effective leader, not who is going to destroy the world. And I think that's one of the big reasons that this has taken off and taken hold in people's hearts and minds right now. A second advantage of this system is that it doesn't require multiple rounds. You don't have to have multiple elections that people have to show up to separately because of course we know what happens when you have a primary or a number of primaries followed by a big election is that most people only show up to the one big election, in which case the candidates that end up on the ballot in that election come from the, the small group of people who showed up to, to the primary. And when there is a primary that's more effort to go to, that doesn't get as much publicity, the group of people who tends to show up tends to be more radical and, and less representative of the general population. So if we want a system where everybody participates in all um, moments of the process of voting, we want to make sure there's only one time when people have to show up and vote. And all of the information can be collected during that one time to sort of do the whole runoff. Another advantage here is that it gives hope to smaller players who might want to enter the race. They don't have to worry that, oh, if I enter the race, am I going to spoil it for someone like me and sort of give steam to a candidate that's really far from, um, from my own position. And in the current system of voting for the president of the United States, we certainly have this, where if you have someone like a Green Party that is a little more similar to the Democratic Party, the candidates who run for the Green Party actually have to think about, am I going to steal votes from the Democrats, therefore giving steam to um, a party that's much, much less similar to me? So that's going to discourage a lot of people from entering the race if they don't want to be the person who spoils it and puts someone way far from them politically in power. But you want a system where really good people can choose to run for re-election without having to worry about all of that strategy. You want candidates to feel free to enter the playing field of voting um, because otherwise the people who reach the top first will be those that people in power sort of shine the spotlight on first. So that's actually the next advantage of this system is that it gets around some of the sneaky uh, power moves that people with money can make. 
Now, obviously, people with money can spend a lot on advertisements during elections. They, they have a lot of tools in their disposal that if you have money, you can use to try to make sure the election goes the way you want. And one of those tools, of course, is to spend money shining the spotlight on people that you like. And of course, if you're worried about spoiling the election, you're not going to vote for the small candidates. You're going to vote for the ones that get the most attention from basically from people in power. So when you have a system where nobody wants to vote for small candidates, you can get an undue influence of people who have the power to shine the spotlight on candidates that they prefer. And a system like this would um, give a little bit more wiggle room to the smaller candidates who might actually um, gain steam or might actually do much better if we're not in this avoid the worst case scenario voting system. That's just a few of the advantages, it's not all of them, but let me talk a little bit about the disadvantages of this kind of system. One of the disadvantages is that this is kind of complicated. Will people understand how this works? And if they don't understand how this works, will that stop them from showing up? Or will they perceive it as a manipulative system just because they don't understand it. I do think people could come to understand this. It's a little more complicated than normal voting, but not that much more complicated. So if this voting system gained steam, I'm sure there would be a ton of videos and helpful materials out there such that people understood what they were supposed to do in the ballot box and, um, and how it works. Do you think this system is too complicated? I tend to think it's not too complicated and that the public is generally to be trusted and smart enough to understand basic systems like this, but some people disagree, so I'd like to hear your thoughts. The second disadvantage is that because you only vote once, there isn't time to sort of emotionally adjust to a different candidate other than the one you were really hoping would win. So what we see a lot of times in the US primary elections is that people really hate a certain candidate during the primary, but their candidate doesn't win, and they would much prefer their candidate to uh, the candidate in the other party. We see that all the time. And because we have several months in between the primaries and the regular election, you have several months to kind of adjust to, okay, I can support this person, I can get behind them, in which case, when that person wins, you are actually behind them. You're not still angry and bitter that your favorite candidate didn't win. Now, if this system happens automatically, um, there isn't that time for emotional adjustment. And I think one of the behavioral things that people need to think about when they're building a voting system is that we want a system that people will be emotionally on board with the person who won. So if all of your attention and all of your emotional energy is pointed at one single candidate, in a voting system like this, you could end up with a situation where a lot of people are angry and disappointed because they went and they voted and their candidate didn't win. Whereas if there's time for them to adjust before the, the outcome of the vote, you actually might get more buy-in for the candidate that wins. Now, the third disadvantage of this kind of system is that it can still be manipulated. Like I said at the beginning, that's true of every system. Um, spending money on advertisements and spending money channeling people's attention is almost always going to be an effective way of manipulating voting. So how might that happen in this system? One way I could see that happening is if you, um, if you spend advertisements sort of targeting populations so that all they really care about is their one candidate. And if you have sort of a splintered population where um, the, the votes are kind of evenly distributed across the six candidates, then maybe those people don't pay as much attention to who is in their fifth versus sixth place or their fourth versus third place. Maybe people aren't going to be thinking that carefully about the exact rank ordering. However, the rank ordering matters a lot. As a matter of fact, it could matter completely for the outcome of an election. So if you can give people a small amount of information that will get them to put uh, candidate four over, over and above candidate five, 
that kind of manipulation through attention channeling can actually manipulate this election. Now, would that be catastrophic? In some ways, I think we don't know. In some ways, I think we would need to test out elections like this to see how big are the flaws, how often are they manipulated, how badly are they manipulated. So I guess my last point here is just these, this system could be manipulated. It could be manipulated through attention just like any other election. Do you think there would be more manipulation with this kind of system than there is an existing system? And if so, explain in the comments below because I'd like to hear people's thoughts on this. Write in the comments below any strengths and weaknesses that you see in the ranked choice voting system because we need to think about this really carefully. Even if we're really excited about it, it's better to think of the weaknesses ahead of time before we actually experience them. And if you're interested in other creative and hopeful voting systems, I have a video on liquid democracy that might be of interest to you.